Have you ever tried carrying a conversation with someone who is in the middle of watching a TV show? It is nearly impossible to grab their attention. I know this because this exact scenario plays out in our home on a daily basis with my four-year-old son. If I want to tell him something and truly know that he is listening, I have to pause the show, kneel down to his level, look him in the eyes, and communicate whatever I have to say to him directly. Listening can be difficult for four-year-olds, but if I'm being honest, it can be difficult for me as well. Today I'm going to be talking about why listening and meditation are necessary for following God. When you look up the word listening, you will find some of the following definitions. To give one's attention, to take notice, to make an effort to hear something or be alert and ready to hear someone. And meditation is often described as focusing one's thoughts, reflecting on or pondering over. These definitions make listening sound easy. So why do we feel discouraged at times when it comes to listening to God? My son has been very curious about Jesus lately, which I love, and has on several occasions asked me to tell God something on his behalf, as if I was the only one who could talk to God. I told him that I'd be happy to talk to God, but that he also could talk to him anytime he wanted to. So on this particular day, we were at home and Jaden was going to let our dog out. As he opened the, screen to the, or the door to the screened in porch, I hear from inside the house Jaden yelling the name of Jesus on repeat at the top of his lungs. He then walks inside and says, Mommy, did you hear me calling for Jesus? I said, yes, son. I think the whole neighborhood did. And he said, well, I, he didn't answer me. And before I could even reply with some kind of four-year-old appropriate theological response, he says, it's probably because he lives in the clouds and they are very, very far away. That story makes me laugh, but it also reminds me that many of us feel the same way when it comes to talking to God and listening to him. We wonder why we can't hear God and listening at times seems hard. But what I want you to hear today is that listening to God is not meant to be burdensome or tiring or one more thing on your checklist. Listening to God leads to life. God created us for relationship with him. He knows that in order to walk with him, we must be able to listen to his voice. And the great news is that he has provided a way for us to hear from him. So if you have ever doubted or questioned your ability to hear from God, as if you have to reach a certain level of spiritual maturity before you can hear his voice. Plant this truth in the depths of your soul. God desires to communicate with you, and he has given you everything you need to hear from him. He has given us his word, and he has given us the Holy Spirit. If you have come to Jesus in faith, then his spirit is in you, and you now and forevermore have the ability to hear from God. He says in John 10, 27, that my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Like sheep, we were created to follow Jesus, our true shepherd. And in order to do so, we listen to his voice. In fact, we can't live the Christian life as it was intended to be lived without listening to God. If we follow our own emotions, our desires, or others' thoughts and opinions and not listen to God, we can go astray and miss out on the abundant life that he has for us. He invites us to abide in him, and the act of abiding is often described as resting, trusting, and remaining in him and his word. One of my favorite passages in all of scripture can be found in Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on it day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. I'm reminded of this passage when I look out my window. We have a little pond near our house, and right by the water's edge is a massive oak tree. Jesus says that he is the living water, and he invites us to plant ourselves like the tree and meditate and soak up his word. Listening leads to life. And not only did he give us his word, but he also gave us the Holy Spirit, his very presence to dwell with us, our advocate, our helper, the one who enables and teaches us to listen. Hear these words in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 12. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has known what God has prepared for those who love him. 
but God has shown it to us through his spirit. The spirit understands all things. He understands even the deep things of God. Who can know the thoughts of another person? Only a person's own spirit can know them. In the same way, only the spirit of God knows God's thoughts. We have not received the spirit of the world. We have received the spirit who is from God. The spirit helps us understand what God has said, provides wise counsel, and even brings conviction when needed. In fact, the Holy Spirit recently and very tenderly revealed to me a threat to my ability to listen to him. And that threat was distraction. There are other threats such as discouragement and doubt, but I believe distraction may be the biggest threat in our culture and society today when it comes to listening to God. I also believe the enemy thinks that if he can just keep us distracted, that we will stop listening to God and forget that he is even there in the first place. And if he can just distract us from feasting and meditating on God's word, that in time we may forget what it feels like to be truly full, truly satisfied. As I mentioned earlier, God has been showing me the ways distraction has hindered my ability to listen to him. But maybe it's something different for you. So today, I encourage you to ask God, is there anything that is standing in the way or hindering me from hearing your voice? Take a few minutes to ask that of God and stop and listen if anything comes to mind. Don't be surprised or discouraged if you don't hear anything in that brief moment, because maybe God is gonna answer that question later today. Keep listening, because listening leads to life. I have a couple bonus exercises or rhythms that have been really beneficial for me as I grow in hearing God's voice. First rhythm I call is five minutes a day. Meditating and feasting on the word of God for five minutes. Scripture says man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. His word is truly nourishment for our souls. Now I'm a mom of two littles and these past few years of motherhood have been quite a whirlwind. Life is fast paced from the moment I open my eyes until when I go to bed at night. There are needs to be met, mouths to be fed, and plenty of work to be done. In these early years of motherhood, it has not been easy for me. And I often neglect my own needs, including the needs of my soul. I don't know if you can relate, but I do know we all have our own form of busyness and adding one more thing can seem overwhelming. But if I can remember to make myself a cup of coffee in the morning, I figured that I could open up God's word while I drink that cup of coffee. I gave myself a five minute goal, but truly I oftentimes can't help but keep reading. In the process of forming this new habit and rhythm, I've truly gained a hunger and a greater desire to feast on God's word. Sometimes I open the Bible before the coffee is even done brewing. One of my favorite Psalms when it comes to prayer is Psalm 5-3. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. I don't know about you, but waiting expectantly sounds a whole lot like listening. This leads to my second rhythm called two-way journaling. Two-way journaling is writing about scripture, prayers, questions, feelings, and then waiting and listening for an answer. And he will. Prayer is a two-way conversation and God loves revealing himself to us and ministering to our hearts. But there is one thing in the practice of two-way journaling that is vital to remember. If God is speaking to you, he will never contradict his word. So when discerning the voice of the Lord and sorting through his thoughts versus your own thoughts, make sure everything lines up with scripture. Listening to God leads to life. And I pray that you are encouraged today and excited to hear from him. I know that he is excited to hear from you.